Qualcomm just reported their latest quarterly figures. I think Qualcomm is probably one of the most underappreciated semiconductor and AI plays out there. We've talked about ASML, TSMC, NVIDIA, all incredible companies and all companies that are crucial, especially TSMC and ASML, crucial for the semiconductor ecosystem. LAM Research, Applied Materials, other two very crucial companies there, but then you've got players like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, and there's always Qualcomm that's left out of the discussion, right? It's always, oh, NVIDIA number one, then you've got AMD, Intel, when you talk about data center, AI, GPU, stuff like that, CPUs, it's still Intel and then AMD, but somehow Qualcomm gets always lost in this conversation, which seems quite strange to me. Now, if you look at Qualcomm's business, it's a business that touches a lot of things in technology, right? From smartphones, automotive, internet of things, AR, mixed reality, industrial, etc., etc. So it's not only fixed on one thing. Yes, it's very, very big in the smartphone space. So when there's weakness in that sector or in automotive, then of course the company does get hit a little bit. But as it diversifies more and more, like now they're launched AI PCs, this company will just become bigger and bigger and stronger as well. Currently, it has a market cap now closer to $200 billion and a forward PE of 16 times. For this type of company, a company that's expected to grow top line growth around 8-9% for the coming fiscal years, but bottom line for fiscal 2024 around 20% and then around 10% in the next two fiscal years, 16 times forward PE also pays a small dividend close to 2% yield, and it's buying back quite a lot of shares. They just announced a new authorization of $15 billion in buybacks. Whenever that will happen, they can choose that. So yeah, Qualcomm, I've made the case at the start of the year as well. Could Qualcomm be the next NVIDIA, not NVIDIA like data center GPU wise, but this stock, this stock's performance. Okay, it's up year to date. I think it's up around 21%, now probably a little bit more than that. Year over year, it's up 47, now over 50% year over year. In my opinion, this company just gets overlooked and I think, well, I think it deserves a higher premium. Maybe I'm completely wrong here, but we're going to go over the recent earnings results. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. Now, currently at the time of making this video, the current average analyst price target sits at $209.5, 21% higher, well, now a bit less than that from the price we're at today. And the average analyst price target actually came down since the start of August from $220 to now $209. And I would assume that tomorrow we're going to get some price target upgrades. If we look at some pricing metrics for PE, V2 EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow, and then price earnings to growth, for some reason, I mean, price to earnings, the five-year mean here has always been around 15, 16 times or so. So it was never really that expensive. So yeah, quite, quite strange. EV to EBITDA also quite close to the five-year mean, a little bit above it, 12.6 times. Price to sales, 4.7 times in the next 12 months. Price to free cash flow, 15.3 times. Really not that expensive. And then price earnings to growth, 1.56. So yeah, you tell me, do you like Qualcomm? Do you hold it? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now looking at the growth rates, what has happened before, what is expected to happen in the next coming fiscal years with regards to revenue, total revenue is up 70.86% since 2024. Now you might say, okay, that's not that much. We've seen better. Yeah, maybe, but it has been going up more recently, more and more. And as you can see, free cash flow. Free cash flow is expected to grow quicker than revenue growth, right? Free cash flow growth closer to 12% year over year in fiscal 2025, then closer to 9% in fiscal 2026, reaching $13.86 billion for the fiscal year. And with Qualcomm, you're touching a lot of industries, a lot of hardware products, especially. So we've got handsets here, basically phones, smartphones, Androids like Snapdragon, for example, Samsung Galaxy phones, etc., etc., all thanks to Qualcomm. You've got the gaming handheld devices as well, also 
Qualcomm powered, then this is something that I think will get touched on more and more, and that's here industrial IoT, Internet of Things. So Qualcomm introduces industrial grade IQ series and IoT solution framework to usher a new era of industrial intelligence. So we're talking here about machine vision, industrial automation, low split autonomy, inspection and monitoring of crops, for example, security and monitoring, incident response and asset inspection, forest fires, stuff like that with the help of drones. I mean, this is going to be very, very big, the next industrial revolution powered by AI and chips. Then, of course, more recently, they launched the new AI PCs. I mean, when it came out, it got a lot of attention, a lot of hype, but that hype died down quite quickly after AMD and Intel launched their competing products, which turned out to be also very, very good. And then there is the automotive part. If you believe in autonomy, if you believe that every vehicle will become basically a computer on wheels, then you should know that Qualcomm will grow in that segment quite quickly. I mean, they've grown this quarter year over year by quite a lot. It's their fastest growing segment, actually. So for the quarter, revenue increased 19% year over year on a gap basis, earnings before taxes up 83% year over year, net income is up 96%, and diluted earnings per share also up 96%. For the full, because this is now done, their fiscal 2024 is over, revenue is up 9%, EBIT is up 39%, or EBT, earnings before taxes, net income is up 40%, and the same with EPS. So for QCT and QTL, revenue for QCT was $8.7 billion at the high end of their guidance range, earnings before taxes was $2.5 billion, with an EBT margin of 28%, that's up two percentage points year over year. As for QTL, revenues there were at $1.5 billion, also at the high end of the guidance range, and EBT margin of 74%, also at the high end of their guidance. They returned $2.2 billion to stockholders, including $1.3 billion in share repurchases and $900 million in dividends. They're also going to have an investor day in November 19th. Now in QCT, you have revenues from handset, $6.1 billion. That's up 12% year over year. And here you can see basically the brands, right? Our recently unveiled Snapdragon 8 Elite has shown strong design traction with successful launches at Xiaomi, Honor, Oppo, and Vivo. Okay, Chinese brands. So you have to think about the implications of, well, trade restrictions, and especially now, maybe a potential trade war, Trump becomes president, how will that evolve? Is it only talks or is it going, actually going to affect a company like Qualcomm? Remains to be seen. So as I said here, we look forward to additional launches at Samsung, Asus, and more. As for automotive, $899 million, that's up 68% year over year, growing very, very quickly. Moving on to Internet of Things, that's $1.7 billion, that's up 22% year over year. And this is basically where you get the mixed reality devices. For example, here they say Quest 3S powered by Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 delivers a more affordable headset and targets users new to mixed reality and immersive experiences, increasing the scale of our spatial computing opportunity. And I think that opportunity is going to be huge. As I said, the board of directors has also approved a new $15 billion stock repurchase authorization. They have no expiration date on that. And it, this is in addition to their stock repurchase program announced in October 2021, which had $1 billion left in repurchase authority. Moving on to guidance for Q1 fiscal 2024, they expect revenue to come between $10.5 to $11.3 billion, beat the consensus numbers. QCT revenue between 9 to $9.6 billion and QTL revenue between $1.45 and $1.65 billion with gap diluted earnings per share coming between $2.39 to $2.59. Now I do want to show you a quick reverse DCF here. So we've got Qualcomm, the free cash flow training 12 months, $11.161 billion, terminal growth rate 4.26%, with a discount rate of 9.58. I basically took those numbers here, terminal growth rate plus implied risk premium and then an execution risk of 1.28% and a 2% dilution for the next 10 years, meaning that the implied growth rate to justify today's price before the earnings impact is 5.1%. 
Now we can of course change it to the after hours price, which is $185. Then the implied growth rate is 6.1%. So 5.1% to 6.1% growth in the next 10 years for free cash flow. Do you think that is too high, too low, perfect? Let me know down in the comment section below. To me, this is really not an expensive stock to own. It's a company that's extremely healthy, strong, has plenty of tailwinds as well. Okay, China is a risk. And I guess in the coming quarters, we will know more about that. But it's been around before. They had, let's say, tensions with China. So yeah, they survived it. And I think they'll survive the next whatever thing will happen. And so right now, looking at the stock, we can see that the stock was actually around the 200-day moving average for quite a long time. Actually, since the end of July, it's been trading around those prices. And now with the earnings, it goes back up. All-time highs was reached here in the middle of June at around $230 or so. Still quite a ways from there. RSI is pretty neutral with now some solid momentum here. I mean... To be honest, can't complain. If you're a Qualcomm shareholder, you really can't complain. This has been a company that has been executing quite well for, for quite some time. Yes, okay, there was some weakness in the smartphone market, right? Not, not just for Apple, but for Android as well. Refresh cycles took a little bit longer, plus there were supply chain issues, etc., etc. But overall, tremendous company. I don't own it personally, but if I had to add another player in the semiconductor industry because I own Intel. Yes, ha ha ha, laugh in the comment section below. I would probably have added Qualcomm. Then of course, you cannot go wrong with the likes of ASML after the recent dip or even TSMC. But if I had to play the consumer or semi-consumer, semi-consumer, <laughs> semi-conductor, uh, I, <laughs> I would have chosen Qualcomm. So. That's about it for me in this video. If you enjoyed this type of video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.